today we're going to be creating an envelope and decorating it with lace napkins or both. This is a junk journal with me. Welcome, this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So I'm going to be working on prompt number 20 of my prompt list, which you can find linked below. And it states create an envelope decorated with lace napkins or both and add it to your journal. So this is where I am so far. I have this page, then I have this page, and now I want to create an envelope, which is probably go, going to go on this page. I was thinking I was going to use some beautiful music sheet for this. The important thing to watch out for when you create an envelope with book pages is, besides, of course, checking that the size is gonna work for, for your journal, is that you, you see that the paper is not too brittle if you're using vintage paper, so when you fold it, it should not crack. On the other hand, you don't want it to be too flimsy either, so you, you kind of wanna find a paper that seems like a medium weight and is sturdy enough that it can take some folding. So this is a double page, which is too big. So I'm just going to tear this in half. And now I'm, I'm going to make a very simple envelope. And I can see here that this is going to be too big if I use the whole width of the page. So I am going to, actually I'm going to trim it down on both sides a little bit. And since I don't trust my trimmer to cut this without tearing it because it is vintage paper, I'm going to tear this with a regular ruler and try to do this as straight as possible. If you have a ruler that has lines like this, that really helps. And another tip when tearing, which took me a while to figure out, <laughs> is to always put your ruler on the smaller piece of paper that you're tearing. So for example, let me show you on the other side. If I were to put my ruler now here to try to tear this piece, I'm gonna have a hard time because this is so narrow and it will probably rip, uh, the strip will rip a few times. So if I turn it around and put my ruler on the small piece and then hold on to the big one to tear it, this should usually be a lot easier. Unless you don't hold your ruler down <laughs> tightly enough and then your paper slips like it is doing now. So be sure to hold that ruler really tight And yeah, I know this is a bit crooked because this paper was really slipping. So I'm going to try to straighten that. Okay, so now I see the width is fine. It's going to fit, fit my journal page and now I want to see that if I fold it, that it's not too wide. So that should be okay. So I'm going to fold it once like this. So this is going to be how deep my envelope will be. I'm just going to grab my bone folder to make a nice crease. And this is kind of a big flap. I don't think I want it this big. So Actually, you know what? I'm going to trim this down a little farther or tear it a little farther actually to make my life easy. And as usual, I'm not giving you measurements because your journal is different than my journal. Your book page is different than my book page. I don't really see what you would have from doing this. So now what I want to be careful is that when I 
So this is going to be a very simple envelope where this is going to be the bottom and then this will be the flap. So I don't want my bottom piece to go all the way to the crease of the flap because that just makes it difficult to take things in and out. So I want to have a gap here. And now when I'm checking how my flap could be, so it would be like this. I will also tear a piece from here because it doesn't need to be such a huge flap. There we go. So that's a good shape now for my envelope. You see I have plenty of space here and my flap still goes over the bottom part. That's important. Now, if I wanted to, I could of course round the corners. I also could, should pay attention to if I have music or text, which way the text goes. So for example, you see now, both this and this are upside down, so that's not great. <laughs> so if I just flip that around, it's still upside down. <laughs> yep, so I folded it wrong. So what I should have done, if I would have paid attention, is to fold this. So this would be the bottom part and then this would be my flap and then both would be in the correct direction. And I actually could still do that, why not? Let's just do that. There, so now you see this is upright and this is upright. So maybe you wanna pay attention to that before you actually make the folds like I did. Okay, so this is a pretty big envelope, it's gonna, fit in here nicely. And I also want to take my circle punch and punch a partial circle here in the middle. If I turn it around, it's easier because then I can see how far I'm going in. There, this is just less than a half because I don't think I have that much space. I wanna be sure that the flap still goes over the half circle. Perfect. Now, as I said, I could round these corners, but I don't think I will. But what I will, of course, do is I'm going to take my vintage photo and ink all around the visible edges. So I don't have to bother about inking inside here because you won't see it. But everything else I'm going to ink up front and back. And once everything is in inked up, it's time to think about how to decorate this envelope. I'm going to be using a napkin. And when I chose this napkin, I decided to use this one. I, th I think this bird is so adorable. I did find this locally. I was, when I chose this one, I was paying attention to on what page it would go so that it would fit with the rest of my journal page, but that is just something I like to do. I like to coordinate things, so it's up to you if you wanna pay attention to that or not. And then we need to figure out how are we going to put this bird on here, which is why I don't wanna close it yet because maybe I wanna kind of wrap it around, I don't know yet. And we need to think about when we're going to attach the envelope, how are we going to attach it? Is the back going to be visible or not. If I just glue it down, then I would just be able to open the flap here and then I don't have to worry about the back side. But if I just attach it with a paper clip, for example, then of course I need to worry about the back side as well because we want that to be pretty too. Another cool option would be to attach it by just Okay, two, two things. Either we attach it by gluing, gluing it down on three sides. So you'd have a pocket here behind the envelope and of course you have your envelope pocket. Or another thing you could do is what I've done in, in my steampunk journal is to attach the envelope 
like a belly band, but in my case, it doesn't really make sense because my envelope is so large. If it would be narrower, it would be cool to attach the envelope as a belly band, meaning you would just glue on the top and the bottom, and then you could slip something through, which is also really fun. Since I really love this page and I don't wanna lose it by gluing down my envelope, I will be attaching it with a paper clip or something. So that means I also need to think about the back side. So now we need to take our napkin and my favorite way of taking apart the plies of the napkin because you don't want to glue the napkin down with all the plies. You only want the top layer where your print is. My favorite way of doing it is taking a normal piece of tape, not a washi that's gonna, not going to be strong enough, and then just putting it on the napkin and tearing it. And then you can very easily remove the rest of the layer. So that's one layer gone. Most napkins that I have come across have three layers. So you wanna remove two of these. So I'm taking the other half of my tape and I am again tearing it. And this is coming off very, very easily now. I don't have to worry about trying to make it separate at the corners. I've done that and it's just, I really, it really annoys me. <laughs> and once you have your layer where it's so see-through that you can easily see your hand, then you know you're at the last layer. And now we can think about how do we want to add this to our envelope. What I'm thinking right now, what would be fun actually, is to have the image like this and to have a part of it on the lower part of the envelope and part of it on the upper part and then when you, and then, but then you can still open the flap. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is I need to tear out the part of the napkin that I want to use, which is this, just this part. And the easiest way I have found to do this is to take a brush. I have a water brush here, but there's actually no water inside. I like this brush because it has a nice and firm tip. And I'm going to just dip it in water. So you take whatever brush that you have that you like that has a pretty good tip. And then you just outline with that brush where you want to tear it. Because we don't wanna cut it, we don't want crisp edges. We want soft edges. So just make sure it's wet. And that will tear perfectly exactly where you want it to tear. You don't have to worry about it tearing into the image that you actually want to tear out. Okay. So now I just very, very gently pull it apart and it will automatically pull where I had the water. So this is the easiest way ever. I'm just pulling very gently and here we have the perfect image. So this is really good. So I want him like this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, again, just put a line right there where I want him to be separated. So I want half of him to be on the flap and I want the bottom half to be underneath so that when the envelope is closed that he will he will be whole <laughs> all right i'm gonna do the top part first and the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to use i have this matte deco glue but you use mod podge or a thinned down white glue tacky glue whatever you have and just put a piece of parchment paper 
underneath here. I'm going to use this round sponge brush because that works well for me. And I'm actually going to make it a little wet first because I don't mind that the deco glue will be watered down a bit. And then I will just pour out a little bit. And that was too much. Whoops, sorry. That was too much, but it's okay. I can use that then on the other half. And I also think I used too much water. Well, we'll see how this goes. So I'm just adding the water here. I mean, the, <laughs> the deco glue with the water. And then I'm going to place him where I want him to be. And he immediately sticks down. Now I'm just gently going to go over with my finger to make sure there's no bubbles. It doesn't matter if this hangs over a little bit, I can cut that off later. A few wrinkles, I don't really mind those. I think that's kind of part of the charm. And maybe I'll, I'm just getting rid of some of the water because it is too wet. And now I will take some of the deco glue and go over it. So I have this, just gently, gently dab over it to make sure I don't tear it. Because of course this is extremely fragile now. And I have torn so many napkins in the past. <laughs> like I am one of the worst nap napkin decoupagers there is. I'm just really being gentle here and hoping that this will be okay. <laughs> okay, I think that should do. So there's that part. So when he dries, he should be fine. And then we need to do the bottom part. So again, I'm taking some some of that deco glue and I will put that here just on where I where my napkin is going to go and then I will try to place it so that it matches up with the other design and I know this is not perfect And I think it's easiest when you when you smooth it, when you smooth from the center out to the edges to try to get rid of any bubbles or as many of the wrinkles as you want to get rid of. Okay, I think that will do for now. I will let my sponge soak in the water because otherwise it will dry up. I will be back once this is dry and we can continue working on it. This has dried in the meantime and I'm fine with the way it came out. It does have a few wrinkles, but as I said, I think that's totally fine. Now I'm going to cut away the excess here. And now I'm going to ink over this part again. And for the back side, I also found a napkin that I have partially used already, so the plies are already removed. And it has this beautiful spring design with uh, flowers and birds, and I think that's really cute. And that will go really well here on the back side. I can think about which part do I want to use. I can use a big part of this because it's so cute. So again, I'm going to use my brush.
that should work. I'm more or less covering pretty much the whole envelope. My sponge is still a little bit moist from the water and I'll just pour some out here and I'll spread it. That might have been too much again. I always use too much. <laughs> napkin on and I'm going to gently start on one side putting on such a large piece is a bit of a challenge I'm just gently dabbing it down now there's probably better ways to do this as I said, I'm not very skilled with decoupaging. Just kind of dipping my, my sponge brush in the water so that I can stick the napkin down easily. And then I will go over it with more of the decoupage medium. on there more or less <laughs> and I will attempt to add some more Mod Podge on top to seal it in. I'm going to be very very gentle. It's already tearing here. I will ignore that and I don't think you'll be able to see later very well be okay okay I'm gonna stop dabbing because I feel like I'm just making it worse <laughs> okay so this is what it is now and I'll be back once this is dry so now everything has dried and it is a bit wrinkly but it's fine here we see where where I tore it but it's fine it doesn't really show that much so that's the back and now I think we can sew this up. You could also of course just glue it. All you need to do is glue inside here and inside here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around once here with my sewing machine and just for decoration purposes I'm also going to sew around the flap like this. So I used a green thread and I used a zigzag stitch and here you can see. So I just think it's a really cute detail. And I also thought I would add a little cluster with lace here. So I have some beautiful pieces here that I think would work. So this is just a little scrap. Then I have these beauties here and I think two is too much so I'm going to cut one and then I have this very delicate one really cute just use a piece of that kind of just layer them very delicate ones I think are best to attach with just a glue stick. And the one on top of that I will just add a little bit of our glitter glue. This one I'll add with art glitter glue as well. So that's the little cluster. And I went through my Happy Mail drawer and I came across these two 
works of art that were sent to me and I don't have I, ha I don't have a place for them yet so I thought maybe this envelope would be a nice place to give them a home so this way I can keep them in my journal they can just be in here and now we just need to add it to the journal page it's going to be like this and I have this cute rose gold paper clip I found this at some local shop I don't remember where but it was not even a craft shop it was I don't know this was completely random and I thought maybe I could try to attach this little charm that I made from broken jewelry pieces So that could be like this. So this is the third page of our signature done. Just to remind you, I'm not, I don't have a journal for this yet. I will first create my pages or my signatures and then construct a journal. Once I know how big the spine needs to be. So thank you as always for hanging out with me. Hope to see you in the next one. Hope you got some inspiration. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.